if I were to do it all again, the person who's doing my spa service while my eyes are literally shut goes, yep, another drug test. It is genuinely a love boat. So the drunk tank is where you go if <laughs> I can't believe this day has come. Hello everyone. Today we're gonna be talking about semester at sea. Mm. Semester at sea has been a huge part of my life because I spent three to four months on the ocean, sailing with over 600 college student friends, learning on a ship, going to 10 countries, and learning so much about myself that I didn't know before. Matcha wants to join. This video has no affiliation with semester at sea. They're not telling me to say anything. This is my opinion, three months post being on the voyage, which is crazy. I can't even believe it. I documented my whole entire voyage. I was on voyage 132. I went during the fall semester of my sophomore year, which was fall of 2023. I don't think a lot of people realize that not only was I a student among everybody else, but I was also working for Semester at Sea. Semester at Sea reached out to me February of 2023. So this time last year, they had seen my content online, saw that I loved creating authentic, organic college content, being able to have a platform and use that to show kind of the closest thing that you can get to being a normal college student while also having a very unique full-time job. They loved that and they offered me a spa on their fall 2023 voyage. I had the option to choose if I wanted to go in fall or spring, which I would have been on right now if I had chosen spring. I chose fall because logistically it just made a lot more sense and my requirements for them as a content creator marketing the whole program itself honestly was kind of a sweet deal because it was almost like a win-win because I also got content that I could make for my channel that you just don't really see anywhere else. This is my overall general experience. Never in my life have I seen 600 plus students unplug off of Wi-Fi and connect with each other. Playing board games, pulling all-nighters with your best friends all while being in a confined ship was the best time of my life. And I just wanna put out there because some people will have questions like how could you upload if you were on the ship and you didn't have Wi-Fi? Because I was working for Semester at Sea, they gave me unlimited Wi-Fi. So I could access the internet at any point of the day. And I recognize that that was completely different from every other student. Every other student had seven minutes of Wi-Fi per day and you could buy packages where you could get more, but because they needed me to upload videos from the middle of the ocean, I needed Wi-Fi to do that. Looking back, I can truly say that I was able to be fully present with my best friends while also having this opportunity to have Wi-Fi. Once you realize that nobody else is on their phone, you don't really want to be on it either. It was one of the most incredible things that I probably will never see again with that many students not being glued to their phone. Obviously being able to roll out of bed, wake up and walk outside to look at the ocean. Oh my gosh, I've never fallen in love with the ocean more in my life. I honestly used to be a little bit scared of it. After sailing the world, crossing the equator, working out with the view of dolphins jumping, I just have so much love for the ocean. Something that no one really tells you about, time is so freaking weird living on a ship. I've never taken so many naps in my life. I was never a big nap girl until I went on semester at sea. And I think part of that is because you have these scheduled meal times. So you eat three meals a day within a certain window. And even though the ship is pretty big, you just don't have that big of a space to walk. So sometimes I did find myself feeling almost like a vegetable because you just eat, go to school, nap, and then you, you take a lot of naps. Now that I'm off the ship, days fly by. But when I was on the ship, one singular day felt incredibly long. But now looking back, they all kind of blended together. So time is just a really weird thing when you're living on the ocean. Everybody seems to want to know about academics and how that worked. So here is a list of the classes that I took. I took four different courses, all of which I would say on a scale of one to 10, 10 being really hard, one being really easy, I would say the courses were like a five out of 10. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that if you're paying this much amount of money to go on this program, all college students of mixed genders, traveling to 10 countries, no rules when you're in the country, you're probably not gonna have classes that are super, super hard. Granted, you had quizzes, homework assignments, exams. Semester at Sea kind of had their own special Wi-Fi that allowed you to use Google Drive, Google Docs, certain apps like that. So you had to submit papers and you had to do the busy work that maybe people don't think that you do on the ship. And exams are the same way. It is so incredibly easy to not show up to class to just skip and think, okay, like I don't need to go because who's gonna hold me accountable? I think in total, I skipped two of my global studies classes. I'm pretty sure there's like a limit of how many you can skip. I'm not entirely sure, but it really is not that hard to just show up 
you just roll out of bed, walk up one flight of stairs, maybe two, and then sit in your class. Also, going back to the topic of time, military time is used throughout the whole entire voyage. So if you're going on any future voyages, I would 100% recommend switching your phone to military time. Well, that took me about two weeks to figure out, but instead of two o'clock, it's 1400. Instead of five o'clock, it's 1700. Every single thing runs on military time. I've always been the type of girl that tries to bond with my professors, not in a pick me way, but just appreciating the fact that they show up and take time to teach us. So I always introduce myself on the first day of any class and tell them, you know, I'm looking forward to your class. Thank you for being here. Whatever. You become best friends with your professors because the professors that go on semester at sea are not like your typical professors back at your home university. You eat meals with them. I had meals with two of my professors and I still am in contact with them after the voyage. That was so cool and I don't think I'm ever gonna have that experience again. Also, something that I will never get to do again is learn something in class on the ship and then once we arrive in one of the 10 countries that were on our voyage, you go in the country and you practice what you learned. So for example, in my health and wellness class. We learned about a course section on the ship and then once we arrived in Spain, we went to a spinal cord rehabilitation center for people who played sports, had a spinal injury, and we got to see how they recover. That's not something that I've ever gotten to do in any of my classes. I think that is beautiful. So I'm just gonna prepare you for this now if you are going on any voyage or you're considering it. You are going to have an emotional roller coaster. And if somebody says that their emotions were not like this on the voyage or their experience, they're lying because this is an out-of-body experience that is going to test you and challenge you. I'm gonna be so real right now. I never thought that I would be sad on the voyage because this whole experience is so glamorized. I guess I'm guilty in the sense that I marketed for them. But if you do go back and watch my videos, I hope that you see, I tried to film the real, raw, what actually happens on Semester at Sea. And I think doing Vlogmas and vlogging for 31 days straight on that voyage really really showed that you get on the boat and you're so excited this is a whole new experience you don't know anybody you're making all these friends everything is like go 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 and then it's great you go to your first country you choose who you want to travel with there's no rules no one's holding your hand you get back on the ship you're doing school i'd say about a quarter or maybe halfway into the voyage that's when you hit this really big low and you could hit this low because one you didn't make the friends that you thought that you wanted to make and everybody else has their friend groups there are clicks by the way that is a thing two everybody's falling in love there's all these romances i don't know maybe you're experiencing a little bit of a, a stab in the heart because somebody likes somebody else whatever and then a big one is you just miss comfortability and you miss the normal routine that you had back wherever you were from something that i was so guilty of was i kept comparing not my friendships on semester at sea but things that i would do in my normal routine yes there was a gym on the boat but some days you just don't want to work out and you don't have the motivation that you might have if you were back in your college town on land and it is hard it's definitely a mental thing i didn't think that i was going to feel it but i definitely did another thing that i am going to talk about is food and eating so if this is something that is sensitive please do not keep watching i definitely experienced a lot a lot of body dysmorphia on semester at sea and solely the reason why was because you are constantly eating on a ship and like i mentioned earlier i love going on walks on the green belt here in boise you can't do that the food is not super healthy it's cruise food all you can eat buffet and every single meal has cake yeah there's always a sweet and i have the biggest sweet tooth of all so i couldn't say no to a lot of things some days i felt just absolutely horrible waking up if you go on any other regular cruise you may find that you come back home with a little bit of extra weight coming back home for christmas break i was so hard on myself because I was not what I looked like when I first got on the ship. Maybe other people couldn't see that, but it was an internal thing that I knew. And so that is something that I just wanted to be transparent about. But you know what? I don't regret anything that I ate on that ship because low key it was actually kind of good um, i had my expectations low though i was expecting the food to be so bad so many people were saying that it was not good from previous voyages i'm gonna say it was like a 7 out of 10 to be honest there was a lot of options you could always go to the grill and pay three dollars for like a burger or a salad if you just didn't want to eat what they made one thing you can always count on is there's pasta at every single meal i remember they had chicken parm and that was my favorite meal on the ship and i would get so excited i'd tell my friends i guess what they have today chicken parm yeah, I thought that was a 10, 
I made chicken parm with my girlfriend the other week and now that I'm looking back, the one on the ship was definitely like a three. What you think is good on the ship changes. Trust me, the child is getting restless and I need a water break. So for anybody wondering about the ratio, there are so many more girls than there are guys. I would say it's like 80% girls, 20% guys. There's no rules when it comes to who can be in your room. Not only do you have the option to go random on a roommate, you can choose your roommate. I chose my roommate before I went on the voyage, but you can also room with your boyfriend. So there were a lot of couples that went on the ship. It was really awkward and I felt horrible when some of them did not work out. It is genuinely a love boat. And some of the stories, man, I said this before in one of my videos when I came back to Boise, I'm not judging anybody, but personally, I am not a number. I will not be a number. I wanted to leave this whole experience truly and genuinely saying that I did it for me and not for anybody else. And something that I did see that honestly kind of broke my heart was people that put their all and only focused on a relationship only for it not to work out in the end and then all of their memories are attached to that relationship or situationship on the boat. Now that I've left semester at sea, I can truly say that everything that you think is so important in the moment and on the ship means nothing or it's just so insignificant. The stories and petty drama and he said, she said, whatever, mind boggling. As much as my experience was a 10 out of 10 on semester at sea, it's not a realistic thing to do school on a ship and then go into beautiful countries like Greece and Spain and Malta, spend hundreds, thousands of dollars if you can, only to go back on the ship, sail to a new continent like Asia, and then spend even more money. That's not a realistic lifestyle. And I prepared myself about a month and a half in advance to know that when I go back to Boise State, I knew that I needed to get my ducks in order. I knew that I needed to get back into my routine. Rolling out of bed, tanning in between classes, getting smoothies from the pool deck. Living that life is not sustainable. When you go in country, there's no rules. You can choose to stay on the ship or you can get Airbnbs with your friends, take trains to different cities in these countries. You could literally do whatever you want. However, there is something called the drunk tank and there's something called on ship time so let me break it down you're usually in country for a solid five to seven days my voyage got rerouted so many times so we went to ports and only ended up being there for two days on the day that you're supposed to be back if you are not on the ship by ship time which is usually 1800 or 1600 i can't remember meaning your passport has been stamped you're on the ship you're not waiting through security if you're not on time you get something called dock time, which means in the next country, you can't get off the ship for an hour, five hours, however long. That was a pretty common thing. The next common thing is something called the drunk tank. Obviously, semester at sea is not stupid. They know that when you go in country, you're probably going to drink. If you're on the boat, you're a college student, which means that when you're in country, in almost every country that we visited, the drinking age was under 21. You're probably going to go out and have some drinks at a bar or a club. And so they're aware of this and they know that students that want to stay on the boat once you're in country could possibly be intoxicated when they come on. Anytime that you want to come back on the boat to grab something or to stay the night, you have to go through security. You get all of your bags checked. You can't bring liquid back or food that's not dry food back. And then you also get patted down and everything in your stuff is searched. I'm talking suitcase open, they're rummaging through your dirty underwear, bras, everything. <laughs> it's really, really humbling. And you're in a big line so everybody can kind of see like when they're going through your stuff. They also are not looking only through your physical things, but they're looking at you. And if you look super drunk, to the point where it's not healthy, then they'll pull you aside and they'll put you in the drunk tank. The drunk tank is on the ship in the medical clinic center and everything is recorded and documented. So anything that you say in the drunk tank is recorded, get examined by a health professional and it gets written down on this long sheet of paper and in some cases, it gets emailed to your home university. They get made aware that you were in the drunk tank. I was never in the drunk tank. I did know somebody that was in there. She told me the whole experience after. And I'm pretty sure there's something where you get like two or three strikes. I want to say maybe, maybe it's two strikes. Because I think if you're in the drunk tank twice, then they're like, okay, you gotta go. I think there was one girl who chugged a bottle of champagne right outside the boat, yacked in the water on the ship, and then she ended up in the drunk tank. It's ruthless out here. Also, drug tests are a thing. There's a 
spa on the ship and I remember one time I was in there I think I was getting a massage or my eyebrows threaded over the intercom which was called the bing bong everybody called it that the person on the intercom was like if your name is blank 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 and they're saying first and last names okay like they're not they're not holding back we need you to come down to the reception right now please thank you intercom is over so the person who's doing my spa service while my eyes are literally shut goes yep another drug test that happened the third week that i was on the boat and it was after our first port which was in malaga spain if you hear somebody's first and last name being called on the intercom it is back to back with other names that 99.9 percent .9 means that there's a drug test going on that's random that exists semester at sea does have the ability to do that i thought that was pretty interesting i did a lot of prep work before i actually went on the voyage and that's something that i did not see or hear about anywhere i had a very different experience living in a ship cabin with a roommate right now i live alone and i do not have a roommate so that was a completely different experience and you know what i actually am super grateful for the experience because i learned so so much and i also didn't mind living in the smaller space I loved my room, cabin 5037, that was the place to be. And in my little memory journal, three of my really close friends wrote that down, that my roommate and I's room was their favorite room to be in. And that makes me really happy because I freaking love that room. Do I want to go on a cruise ship anytime soon? No, I think I'm all shipped out for the next year at least. Traveling to all these amazing, beautiful countries and experiencing their culture, it made me realize that I have the travel bug. It also really made me have this desire to travel within the States. Sometimes we think that traveling to all these countries abroad is going to fulfill you and you're going to see the most incredible things ever. And a lot of that is romanticized because of the internet and social media. But where I live, for example, in Idaho, I'm surrounded by some of the most gorgeous states like Montana, Wyoming, Oregon, California, and even just going up north to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. That's something that I really, really want to do. It, it doesn't take a plane to get there. It doesn't take a crap ton of money. It just takes my car obviously my dog who's in my lap and an itinerary and i could see just as beautiful things the whole experience overall well, i could write a whole movie about it my friendships that i made i'm gonna cherish for the rest of my life they're gonna be at my wedding i think if you're considering doing any study abroad program i would 100 000 million kajillion percent recommend going on semester at sea it's a once in a lifetime experience and you really get you get it all. You get the full package. Not only are you studying abroad in one place, you're studying abroad in 10 places, plus the whole entire ocean. I think that's all for today's video. I'm probably going to edit this and realize, oh my gosh, I missed this huge important thing. If you guys are seriously interested in Semester at Sea, I have so many videos on my channel. You can get the whole rundown of Semester at Sea just by watching probably 50 plus videos that I did. I also documented a lot my TikTok and my Instagram, so feel free to go follow those. I cannot thank semester at sea enough for giving me the privilege and opportunity to be on voyage 132 with them it was amazing if i were to do it all again i would not change a thing so thanks for being here and clicking on this video subscribe stick around and i will see y'all in the next video ciao just a cup is all i need i can close my eyes and breathe a song in good conversations tastes just like me